Hi, I'm Mike Stanton with Build America Mutual. I'm joined today by Clarence Anthony, CEO of the National League of Cities. And today we're in Washington, D.C., where NLC is about to put out its City Fiscal Condition Survey. It's an annual survey. Uh, Clarence, just tell us a little bit about the background about it. How long has NLC been doing this, and what's the purpose? Yeah, uh, we've been uh, publishing this for 34 years, and um, it has become one of our uh, benchmark uh, publications. Uh, used by our members as well as uh, private sector and industry er experts as well. And it really helps uh, city leaders nationally to be able to understand what is coming in the future, in the next like, year or three years around the economy and help them to be able to plan uh, the financial infrastructure for the cities, uh, towns and villages that they lead. City leaders and municipal bond analysts. Yes, <laughs> yes, and exams. I think that's what I meant when I said the industry. Right, sure. uh, because, you know, we always say um, if um, the uh, country uh, has a, a cold, uh, clearly cities have the flu because we are at the base of what is going on in America and we oftentimes are the ones that have to come up with the solution. So being able to plan and know and understand uh, the economy and the finance structure uh, of the future of the economy is very important to city leaders for their planning and investments. So, so let's get into some of the actual findings. This year's survey, the, the results were a little bit different than recent years. Let's, right. One of the things you focused on was regional differences. Why was mm -hmm. it important to break that out this year? I do think um, as we look at America, we see that um, you know different regions because of the invest uh, or the industry mix a lot of times uh, is uh, very different as it relates to the economy um, and also the size of the city. Um, most of our respondents, uh, I would say, uh, historically have been very very large uh, mm -hmm. communities, and we focused a little bit more to try to get a diversity as well and a breakout of, uh, of the city size as well. As it relates to the region, most of the cities saw in 2020 or they estimated that they may see a change in uh, the um, economy. But in the Midwest, they saw a quicker decline, uh, a quicker decline in the economy in, in the coming year, about 4.0% whereas the uh, other regions saw that it would be further out. Um, and that could be uh, based upon a number of things um, because of the jobs, uh, the infrastructure that exists in that region. But clearly, we thought it would be important to be able to break it out regionally as well. Um, another thing that was in there was the number one uh, source of pressure on budgets was cited as infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And you know we're looking in the municipal bond market this year that new money investment is about flat in, in capital infrastructure and, and that hasn't really changed much uh, through this recovery. Uh, what could happen at the federal level or other places to help uh, cities deal with that stress? I think uh, it's been very clear in the last decade that cities have funded 75% uh, of the infrastructure investment by doing uh, uh, municipal bonds, revenue bonds, uh, general obligation bonds, asking uh, the community to make these investments. And um, what we're wanting is the federal government to become a real partner because um, there's a trillion dollar deficit that's in our system right now as it relates to uh, infrastructure. And so what we're doing here at NLC, the National League of Cities, is advocating and trying to partner with the administration as well as with Congress to try to get an infrastructure bill to address that uh, deficit, if you will, um, of our uh, infrastructure system. What we're finding, um, though is uh, there is that um, expectation from our citizens that we're going to do it in, even if the federal government does not. So we got to come up with a way. So we've been advocating um, and we've been working with other associations and, and members of the House and Senate to try to come up with the bill. Uh, can I say that we've been able to get the federal level to step up and pay attention to this issue and not be distracted by all the other things that are going on. I can't sit here and tell you yes, 
But I will tell you that there's uh, interest uh, to, to try to come up with an infrastructure bill uh, that would improve uh, our grade from a D plus to at least a C. And I think in a country like ours, um, that really uh, to have a D plus rating is an embarrassment. And so we're gonna work to make sure that our, um, the dollars that's needed uh, is advocated by the National League of Cities. And so I think that's a good segue because one of the other points in the survey is you asked the participants, do they have confidence in their ability to meet their residents' needs? And they were very confident, in fact, a little more mm -hmm. confident despite the kind of cloudier revenue picture. What do you attribute that to? When you talk to a municipal issue a leader, uh, be it a large city or a small village or a town, they're, they're not going to start with the response of this is a federal problem and I don't have the answer. They're going to start with let's talk about how I can help you uh, contact your congressional member or I've been advocating on this issue or the best answer and the answer that's most often shared is, um, I'm gonna take this to City Hall and see what we can do to solve it. And that's consistent every time we survey uh, American citizens is that the local level is the most trusted level. Uh, and it's mostly because we focus on solutions. We don't focus on, uh, focus on partisanship. So last question, you personally, you're an advocate for cities, but you also are an advisor to cities. You, you, you offer them advice. So what would you tell them to do, you know, given the outlook for the economy coming up in the next few years? Yeah, I think uh, my advice to a municipal uh, official at this point is, uh, first of all, pay attention to our city fiscal condition report of 2019 and read about what we see coming. Um, always plan uh, for uh, the financial infrastructure of your community. Uh, look at your CAFRA, you know, look at your, your plan for infrastructure investment and know that, that this is uh, a general prediction of the view of the fiscal condition of America right now. But really ask your staff to dig in and, and look at your, your, your growth in terms of your tax, tax uh, uh, collections that you've gotten. You got to make sure you look at your reserves. Uh, you got to work with your chief financial officer to make sure that um, you know, you're able to repay your, your bond requirements. Um, you know, look at um, going to, years ago we would go to New York and, and meet with uh, the market makers, but now um, you know, have a conference call with them and see what your bond rating is and try to get that um, improved if you can, but at least know the challenges that are out there with your rating. But more importantly, Always better be ahead of the curve. <laughs> be ahead of the curve, but more importantly, uh, sit down as a, a municipal uh, leadership group and say, here's where we want to take our community and here's how, knowing what the fiscal condition of our nation uh, but also the fiscal condition of my region, but more importantly, know what the fiscal uh, structure and capability of my community. Be a leader in, in leading your community in having a fiscally sound uh, community. Well, thanks so much for taking the time today and discussing with us. Thanks for, uh, to NLC for putting this together. Uh, a link to the full survey is in the description right below the video. And for more insights on NLC research like this, please join us at the City Summit Conference coming up in San Antonio in November.